engineer survival, so I'm going to go over navigating by the stars using the lured technique. Stay tuned. Okay, so lured. What am I referring to? Lured is L U R D. Lured. Now lured just stands for left, up, right, and down. And that goes clockwise around the cardinal directions, just like this. There's the cardinal. We have north, east, south, and west. L U R D matches L U R and D. So there's lured. Okay? Now each star and group of stars, constellation in the sky, okay, say like um say like the Big Dipper is constantly moving in the sky. The reason why that is is because we're constantly rotating. So what's actually happening is the stars aren't moving. We are. Okay? Now the Earth is always revolving to the east. So we're always turning to the east. So because of that, the stars that look like, you know, the, the stars that look like they don't move at all, well, because we're moving, they look like they're moving. Okay? So the stars really aren't moving, but we are. Okay? Now, it's important to understand the mechanics of how they're moving, in what direction, and why, for this all to make sense. Okay? But the easy, easy explanation of not getting into the details, just the memorization, the rule is, if you're staring at a star, a single star, or a group of stars, constellation, for a half hour, and you're looking at it and nothing else, and you notice that it's moving on you, say it starts moving up, you know, it was here, now it's here. Well, if that happens, man, it's going to happen in one direction or another. Then you can match up what direction you're actually looking at on the planet. Incredibly useful stuff. Okay? So if it moves up on you, L U, right? U. Up. You're facing east. Pretty simple stuff. If it moves to the right, you're facing south. If it moves to the left, you're facing north. If it moves down, you're facing west. Okay? Left, north, up, east, right, south down west. Now, <clears throat> the reason why that works is because we revolve around Polaris. <clears throat> now, Polaris basically is attached to our North Pole. So what does that look like? All right, well, we have Polaris. It does not move. We have the planet. There's our axis, okay, and it's like there's a string from an axis attached to Polaris. And all we're doing is, it's like, it's like Polaris is just swinging us and we're a yo-yo, just being swung around Polaris. And it makes a cone shape, okay, because as we revolve around, say, the sun right here, as we go around, We're just attached to Polaris the whole time. And it creates a cone effect. So it's just like we're a yo-yo or a rock on a string, whatever you want to think of it as. And there's a string attached to Polaris. That's the hand. So this is the, this is the constant. And the Earth is the variable. So Polaris just subtly swings us as if we're on a string all the way around. So we're constantly attached to it and facing it at all times, okay? Now, because of that, Polaris doesn't move in the sky because it's right on our, our line of revolving, okay? Because this is our axis and we revolve always east 
on our axis. So here we are spinning constantly attached to Polaris. Well the north is stuck to Polaris while everything else spins. So it seems like Polaris isn't moving. Now technically the earth does have a wobble so our north star changes over thousands of years. And sometimes it's in the middle. There isn't even a star, you know? <clears throat> but basically, right now, we're attached to Polaris. So, pretty simple. Makes a cone shape. We're swinging around. And as we revolve, because it's on our line of revolving, Polaris seems to stand still while all the other stars move around it. And that's one of the keys to LERD. Okay? It makes a big pinwheel. So let's do that now. So we have Polaris right in the middle. And all the other stars all around it are moving, rotating always counterclockwise just like that because we're right here and we're turning so as we turn always eastward everything else behind appears to move the opposite direction okay appears to move the opposite direction because we're going away from it it's not actually moving only we are see how that works it's like I'm lined up here and as I rotate, it appears they go in the opposite direction. Okay? So this is how it works. We have a pinwheel with Polaris right in the center. Now this is literally LERD. This is what LERD is. Period. Super simple. Because if I'm looking north, right? I'm looking north. I'm looking in this direction. Right? Towards Polaris, looking this direction. All the stars to the north of Polaris and at Polaris, all up here, they're all going this direction. That's left. If I'm looking, again, we're attached here, right here. If I'm looking to the east of Polaris in our planet, well, all the stars are going in this direction. That's up. If I'm right here, looking down, or south, they're all heading this direction, aren't they? That's to my right. There's an R for LERD. Last one is D, because they're heading down around the pinwheel. So there's L-U-R-D. Now, obviously, nothing is pure. Okay? You have diagonals, too. So if you're looking at a corner and a star or constellation moves in this direction, right? Oh, well that's a little left and a little up. L U. Well that's northeast. So you're looking northeast if it moves left and up. Okay, if we're if we're looking at a star and it moves down and to your right, so you're looking at a star, it's right here. You look at it for half hour. Now it's down here. Well, it moved down. Because it had to go down. And it had to go to the right to get down there. Well, then you're clearly looking southwest. Because that corresponds with D and R. Down right. Southwest. Alright? So here's the nuts and bolts of why LERD works. Okay? It's just a pinwheel off of Polaris. Now I'm going to show you one other way that you can visualize this in the real world. Okay, so again, the planet is revolving, okay? So let's say towards you is north, right? So behind me is south. To my right is east. To my left is west. Now, say I'm looking at a star, and it's right, right in front of me, and I don't know what direction that is, okay? So I'm watching this star. Now remember, I'm standing on the planet, looking north and the planet always revolves to the east right and it's a circle so it has curves right 
So here I am standing, and I'm doing this. I don't realize it, but I'm doing this as I go around the planet. Okay? So here's my star, right here. And now I'm going to revolve and realize that it's, stand, it's standing right here, and I'm heading this direction. Well, it looks like it's going to my left. So I'm right here, and as I start moving, it's going this way. Wow, crazy. It could be all the stars. They're all moving this direction. Now, if I'm facing east, just imagine this. You have all the stars in front of you and above you, okay? <clears throat> now, as I start revolving around the planet, standing right on top of the planet, the planet's moving me like this. Especially as I go over the corner, I'm starting to head down, right? Because the planet is revolving this way, right? Because the axis is right here, straight up and down. So I'm going to be going in this direction. So I'm facing here. So I have stars right here looking at me. Now I start heading towards them, and I start going down the corner. Well, what does it look like to me that, that the stars are doing? They're going up, because as they go around the corner, it looks like they're going above me. To go, there they go. Okay, that's up. West, looking at the stars. Okay. <clears throat> now, now I'm standing this direction on the corner, and I'm going to start revolving up. I'm heading back this direction. So it looks like they're going down. And south, very simple. Okay. South. I'm revolving this direction. So here I go. I'm going around the planet. It looks like they're going that way. To my right. Okay? So that's the real world example that you want to imagine. You, you know, you're, you're looking at the stars, but you're on a planet that's moving. It's always going this direction. It's always going to the east. Right? If you're, if you're looking north, well, it looks like everything is going to the left. You know? If I'm going east, I'm going to get over that hump, that corner. It looks like they went above me. It looks like they went up. Okay, so left, up, right, and down. L-U-R-D, north, east, south, and west. Okay, so let's just talk about the pinwheel for another moment. Now, basically, you want to take more than one reading to make sure that you're accurate. Okay, because... There can be variances on how this works because the farther away you are from north, the less it looks like it's, it's moving because the angle is um, so much broader. Where around the north star, it seems like it's always going a direction, right? It's like really cranking around. Where down here, you know, it could just be kind of like moving like this, barely doing anything. Eventually, you don't have to hours and hours wow okay it's way over here all right you know so you want to you want to be careful about taking readings from stars uh, near the horizon um, things like that because north obviously isn't near the horizon you know it's up in the sky <clears throat> so you want to um, take more than one reading and you don't want to take a reading of a star that's you know like right right next to it you know you want to turn a whole another side of the sky you know, 180 degrees, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. But you definitely want to crank to another part of the sky. You know, if you look at this and it moves over here, you know, move down here somewhere and do it again to verify that. Three times is the best way to do it. You know, and each one could be, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. It won't take too much time. Now, I just want to talk about um, a realization about this pinwheel, okay? It's only visible... 12 hours okay and that's when there's 12 hours of darkness 12 hours of, of light all right <clears throat> that's obviously not the case every day of the year so basically we have 12 hours where a star or a constellation can move for you okay so basically how that works is if we have 11 a.m., we'll say, and um, 
11 p.m. That's 12 hours, and then it'll be another 12 hours will be um, 11 a.m. again. So if you have, say, the Big Dipper, just like that, and that's, you know, I don't know, maybe 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, something like that. As time goes on, it's going to move in this direction with everything else right around the pinwheel of Polaris. All right, so 12 hours difference, it's going to be over here. So now it's going to be, <clears throat> let's see, like that. Okay? So this can be very important to visualize, you know, and this is only you know, this is only visible 12 hours because we only have nighttime 12 hours a day. And that's the most it, that it, it can be, is 12 hours uh, for most of the planet, right? So that's all you're going to see is here to here. That's it. You're not going to see the rest because that's daytime, all right? So we have night and day. So that's really important to understand as well. You're not going to see you know, the full spectrum, because half of it's going to be concealed from you from the sun. So, say this is 10 o'clock, 10 p.m., it'll be 10 a.m. over here. That's where it's going to be. So, just a, a little tip on the pinwheel and how it works based on the sun cycle, okay? You're only going to see half of it. Okay, so lastly, a good tip for being able to look at a single star in the sky for so long without moving your head is to put a stick in the ground put another stick in the ground with a Y okay you can do you can do two of them if you want I usually have to sit down to do this because I'm looking at something at such a high trajectory and you make like gun sights. You look right through them and you do not move, you know? You just sit still and you line this up and you try to stay as still as possible. You just line up your star right at the end there and that way you can judge how it's gonna move. Now what I like to do is not use the bottom of the V on the second one though, okay? The reason being is that as it moves, it ends up getting behind one of the Y's, the sticks. So I like to either make a little notch or um, use a natural um, indicator on that stick, you know, a little mark that's on it, something like that, um, so I can get the height. So as it moves, I can see where it's going to go compared to that. I can, I can visualize the middle as I'm staring at it, and I keep this all in line with it best I can. 15, 20 minutes later, it's very obvious which direction the star is moving. You know, if you wait even longer, it's more obvious. It's up to you. Okay, so this is LERD. It's extremely simple to understand. It's basically just the planet revolving and stars moving because of it. And by understanding how the planet revolves and why, you can easily understand why LERD works. L-U-R-D. You know, left, up, right, down. And you're just looking at a star or a constellation, and you're just um, looking at it to see what direction it moves over a given period of time. The longer time you give it, the more obvious it is what direction it's going. That's all there is to it. And then by using that, L-U-R-D, northeast, southwest, you can dictate what direction you're facing on the planet. Or L-U for northeast, etc. It's really, really simple. Well, this has been Machine Survival. Appreciate your views, your comments, and your support. See you guys in the next one. Take care.